Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We are here finally after a break. We are finally going to be witnessing losers round number four. And we have Crazer versus DJ LOL XCN. You know what? what? I think it's going to be a pretty strong uh, game here. I mean, Crazer. The thing is, Crazer, he had a pretty awesome deck. Uh -huh. uh, we saw that yesterday when, yes, we, uh, when definitely. he was uh, playing the matches the, that we casted. The YOLO lock. Yeah, the YOLO lock did a lot of work. The thing is, DJ LOL XC, it's kind of funny because he actually, uh, he's like the only player in this tournament, I think, that is actually running a hunter, hunter. deck. This is the one and only hunter deck in yeah, the game. The lonely hunter. And yep. I the lone like, hunter. If, if I'm not mistaken, he calls the deck uh, shoot only or something like that, which is kind of funny because he's actually going to be only using his snipe power and all this kind of jazz. So it's kind of funny to see uh, that kind of stuff happening over here. Yep, so definitely, I'm definitely. kind of interested to see how uh, both these teams are going to match up, both these players are going to match up. And let's just jump right in this game because you know what? I'm sure everyone here is willing, ready and willing to be watching a lot more Hearthstone action here. So guys, this is going to be a best out of five as usual. Losers round number four, Crazer K. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me there. Crazer versus DJ LOL XZ. Let the hunt begin! <laughs> Indeed, let the hunt begin. Oh, and speaking of let the hunt begin, DJ LOL XZ actually go with his uh, treasured uh, hunter deck over here. Yep. So, shoot only. Shoot only deck. That's kind of surprising to see here. He has a deadly shot, eagle horn bow, a, starving, bur a starving buzzer, sorry, and a kill command here. Now, what do you think he should mulligan out of this hall? He could potentially keep the starving buzzer, but he's going to die very easily to hero power. Mm -hmm. Kill command does work a lot, uh, uh, very well with self units. Right. Definitely keep the bow because it's a very good three drop weapon. Mm -hmm. Kill command here is debatable. I would definitely mulligan kill command and the deadly shot. Uh, Abomination fan of knives and eviscerate all here for Crazy Z. Do you think he should actually keep any of these? <coughs> definitely not the A bomb. He can choose to keep the fan of knives for those uh, cheap minions. Eviscerate is definitely a must keep. Alright, so it seems like he's actually going to try to mulligan all of this. So, they're looking here at DJ Lolexy's screen. He has uh, opted to mulligan the dead shot and the kill command. He's going to get a multi shot and another eagle horn bow. So, I guess he gets a, li a little bit more weapons here. Uh, I'm not sure if he runs any secrets in his deck, does he? Uh, yes, actually, he does run a lot of secrets. He runs snake trap, two snake trap, two explosive traps. Yep. That four, that's four, four traps. Wow. Four traps. That can actually make the durability of the Eagle Horn a lot more expen uh, a lot more better, actually. Crazy XC only has an Eviscerate, Eviscerate, Backstab, and an Archie Commander. And over here, he has his Archie Yeah, Spire. it's just going to Hero Power and Attack yep. Phase. Exactly. I mean, he's in a really good spot now. He has the Board Control, plus he's doing a lot of damage. Well, not a lot, but just every damage counts. And he has a lot of answers for anything that comes out. Oh, but look at this, though. There is a Snake Trap available. Uh, that is a possibility here to be playing with Starving Buzzard so you can get a lot of card draws here. I mean, he could essentially coin for a Beast uh, Animal Companion and have a very good strong presence on the board. Unfortunately, he doesn't seem to do that. He's just going to go with a Hero Power and just shoot there. A uh, Van Cleave is going to be drawn by Kaiser K. So, you know, Van Cleave is just a really, really strong card. It's, yep. it's a, he's a low cost card. I mean, he's yep. only 3 mana cost. And the thing is, especially in a turn 10, when you play a lot of one drops and all this kind of shit, Edwin Van Cleave becomes a beast of a, of a room. I mean, even if you backstab and Van Cleave is still a pretty strong card for a 3 drop. Exactly. He gets a lot more buffs from that. So looking over at DJ Lolex, and he's gonna go ahead and use the Starving Buzzard, Buzzard. and the Snake Trap. So yep. gonna 100% get a lot of card draw from this. And I do believe Crazy K, Crazy K, sorry, knows about what's gonna happen here. Yeah, so he's definitely going to backstab the Buzzard. Doing anything else, attacking with it would be a bad play essentially. And he can play the Van Cleef for a very huge presence. Right. And the funny thing is. It's unfortunate that he doesn't have an Eagle Horn bow out already, so it doesn't really benefit from that secret there, which is kind of a little bit uh, sad to see, but look at that. The Eviscerate is just going to go ahead and come out. So that is just a perfect... Well, sorry, was that Eviscerate? No, that was the backstab. backstab. Yeah, the backstab is just perfect over there because now that means that even if he attacks with the Snake Trap, it's just going to pop nothing. Yes, right here is contemplating whether to play the Van Cleef for a 3 mana 4-4 four four, or play the Dark Iron Draft to buff up the Iron Squire that deals 7 damage instead. Yeah, I think even just going for the Dark Iron would be a lot more better because, I mean, at er as early in this game in 4 mana, it's not as effective with Edwin Van Cleef. I mean, as yep. long as you can play a lot more of the stronger cards, it's going to be way, way better. Uh, I mean, it's 3 mana for 4-4, which is okay, exactly. but not quite that legendary yet. 
Exactly, exactly. Now, taking a look over at DJ Lolex has, he uh, has, still has the Animal Companion, which is yet to use, and the Eagle Horn, bro. He does have the multi-shot, though, but that won't kill off the uh, Dark Iron Dwarf, because I, if I'm not mistaken, it only deals 3 damage. Yes, his only option here is the Animal Companion. Well, he get Misha. That's one of the best drop he can get. Yeah, exactly. With that animal, uh, with that snake trap deck, he definitely ping off the the shield and kill the Argus Square next turn. Definitely, definitely. That's actually a very, very good, uh, a very, very good animal companion to random. The RNG definitely in his favor. Unfortunately, he should have actually played that first before getting his stubborn buzzard and uh, the combo going up. So at least he could have, you know, got a little bit more out of it. But even then, the backstep still goes yep. through that. Backstep still goes Unfortunately, the Rook has the perfect answer for that situation. Yup, exactly. It's sad to see that's not going to be the case though. As for here, Crazy has a lot of options. I mean, he can always Deadly Poison, he can Eviscerate. Uh, he's, he testing, he's testing for Snake Trap and he got it. Yeah, he's got the Snake Trap there. That means that uh, he... I don't think he wants to trade. He's just going to hit face on that Mishka there. Yeah. Yep. So Mishka's going to die. Their 4-4 is still going to be alive even if... Even if all three snakes, the snakes, snakes, what the hell? Snakes attack him. And the thing is, he has. Okay, here's the thing. He could. The best here, the best play here is actually to kill at least one of the snakes. Because if if DJ Lolex top decks are hyena and he trades all three of the snakes, it will be a very huge hyena to deal yeah, with. It will definitely be a very very uh, tough hyena to deal with. Because those hyenas, they want to munch on every single thing they can. Uh, no, on all over those dead bodies. So, look, so looking over here, what do you think is the better play? I mean, like a deadly poison and an eviscerate could also do. Well, he already attacked with the hero, so he can attack again. Yeah. So his possible way of board clearing right now is to eviscerate a one-one, or ignore it. So he's choosing to ignore it. I guess. I guess that's. And true. there we go. Oh, there is the top deck. The scavenging hyena is there, and that is actually very, very scary. Yep. Because now that means that he can trade very effectively. I mean, he can even use his kill command to kill off the, the Dark Iron if he wants to make sure that his uh, his uh, starving hyena doesn't Well, he can always use the bow. I mean, he's two mana for the hyena. Oh, the yeah, hyena. exactly, exactly. Yeah, he can Eagle Horn and kill off that Dark Iron Drop. So, he's gonna get, oh, look at those buffs. The buffs are starting to come up. Here comes the huge color buff. I mean, he should just exact, I mean, he should just go ahead and throw in all those minions into the face of the 4-4 of the four four so they can use the Eagle Horn bow on top of that. Yes. I'm actually surprised it takes him quite a while to decide, but I think he's a little bit afraid that he has some sort of corner or something like an assassinate, which he can use in the next turn to kill off his starving hyena. So I guess maybe that's why he's playing a little bit more conservatively. But over here, it seems like he wants to keep that 1-1 so that he still has the ability uh, to still have an extra treatment aboard. I mean, it still will help out with the starving hyena if he doesn't have anything to help out, I mean, anything to disable the hyena. And at the same time, I'm sure that he also can use it to ping on something else. Well, essentially, I would I would rather trade off the last remaining snake there, so the hyena will be 8-5. Uh, so it doesn't die to just one eviscerate. So even if the rogues want to kill it, he has to use eviscerate and attack into it. We will, we will sacrifice 8 of his H3, which is still a good deal. Actually, yeah, that's very, very true. And here's the thing though, there's an Archer Commander right there and the Archer Commander is actually very good against the Starving Hyena because it's gonna kill it and it's not even gonna die, so... But instead he's gonna choose to waste, uh, to use the Evasor in there. Very uh, questionable plays. I think he's, I think he's willing to play Edwin Van Cleef at this point. Yeah, he's gonna go with Edwin Van Cleef. It's not the best, but still a 6-6 six, six is very good. It, it, get, it does uh, stay in that range where it's not too high above, where it gets killed off by a big game hunter because that is actually very, very scary over there. Let's take a quick look back at DJ Olalek's screen and well, he does have a Timberwolf and that's about it. I mean, he has Eagle Horn Bow. Well, and he could go YOLO Deadly Shot. I mean, it's a possibility. That's 50, for sure. 50. It's a 50. I mean, he, it's the biggest play he can do right now if he really wants to do that. I mean, a Deadly Shot here would actually be very, very good against Edwin Van Cleek if it hits Edwin. Yep. Of course, and that's if RNG gods are in uh, DJ Lolex's favor. Definitely. So let's see what he's going to do here. Is he going to forget a deadly? YOLO deadly? And there we go! It's the Dungeon no. Square! The deadly shot unfortunately doesn't aim the Edwin Van Cleef there. So that's actually a very, very huge waste of a card. Which means now... Wow! No. He's planning to play a Timberwolf. Yeah, definitely. Uh, weapon up and pass. He's going to attack face with it. Still okay. So why, why do you say that he should attack base? 
Well, at back face since he's, uh, he's trying to burn the opponent down with his durability weapon plus minion uh, synergies. So going for face does actually make sense. But at this point, you rather want to save the weapon for something that's hard to deal with. I guess. And right now, look at that. That's a 6-6 and a 4-2 on the board, plus a divine shield. I'm not sure exactly how DJ Lolex can actually survive this, because the multi-shot will not kill him. Yep, he's looking into lethal right now. Okay, he has, he has a kill command here. Which uh, doesn't help much. It's one mana shot, actually. It's one mana shot for killing both. So he has to at multi shot kill the four two and then kill, kill command the uh, Edwin, yep. which is just nice to kill him. Yep. But he's still very far behind. Yeah, he and is. having on four health. Uh, look at that! Eviscerate on Grazer. Oh god! Yeah, this is it. Out comes the dagger yeah, for five damage. Yeah, he's dead. He's dead. GG's. Oh. Yeah. Drake. Five damage. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, five damage. Gotta and go for that overkill. Oh, minus one extra damage there. That's gonna go right to the face there of DJ Lolex. His under, unfortunately, is gonna lose to this Crazer uh, rope deck here. Crazer with a very, very huge game advantage. And I think a lot of it had to deal with the fact that he tried to run a combo that yep. was unsuccessful. I mean. Starving buzzer and the trap is really really good. But the problem here is that if you if you don't have if you don't secure the fact that the starving buzzer is gonna survive, there's really nothing else that you can do. So you know Well what? he he did opt to go for the very greedy play for that fancy play you call it for those epic card draws to try to get that card advantage for the but it was very unfortunate that the rook had the perfect counter for that situation. Yeah, I mean, the, the rogue at the same time, I mean, on top of just being a hero with that ability to have that one extra damage and also with things like deadly poison, and there's like so many things that can actually help with them. So I'm thinking that we should actually go ahead and jump right into the second game because you know what? DJ Lolex, he's down on his hunter and it seems like we're gonna go ahead. Okay, let's take a little peek here. I think he's gonna go with his mage here and against this rogue. Yep, it's gonna be that mage. And now this will be a little bit interesting here because you know mage. I guess you know you can kind of call them that overpowered class, but we've actually seen more a lack of mages in my opinion. Like yep. in this game, it seems like there's less mages. I mean, in this tournament, there's less mages as compared to things like things like uh, paladin and. Yep, Anyways, definitely. let's take a quick look at the mulligan cards here. They have Cobalt Geomancer, Arcane into like Flame Strike for our DJ Lolex. Do you think you should get rid of anything here? Well, the Cobalt Geomancer and the Arcane Intellect is kind of a good combo here. But he's definitely got the, not going to play the Cobalt Geomancer on turn 2. He probably should mulligan that, keep the Arcane Intellect and definitely mulligan the Flame Strike. Yeah, and for Crazy Egg there, uh, he has a Harvest Golem, a Fairy Dragon, and a Mystery, and a har uh, another har Harvest Golem. So what do you think you should get rid of here? One Harvest Golem would be fine. Mulligan the second one and keep the rest. Alright, so it seems like they're going to go ahead with that. And uh, like you know, nicely mentioned, DJ Lolex as well. Going to get rid of these other two cards. He does at least get another uh, card, card draw here. So, I mean, he can't really do nothing here. So he's just going to end his turn. Yep. So Crazy Z, he actually has a Morgan Infiltrator. Which is actually going to be pretty good. I mean, he also has a Divine Shield minion. Which is even better against the Novice Engineer. But well, he could even coin out the Argent Squire at this point, since he has a efficient 2 drop and an efficient 3 drop to follow up. I guess, yeah, that's actually very, very true. So, I think he's trying to say, no, he's, I guess he's a little bit afraid, but I mean, even if he throws out the Argent Squire, that means the, the hero power has to be used to pick it up. So, yep. Kind of confused as to why he decided to do that. I mean, in this kind of situation, you can even backstab this, this mob if he wants, but I don't think it's necessary. I mean, he could do it, but I mean, you want to play things like Fairy Dragon, it's a lot more better. He can just use a Morgan Infiltrator to trade, or he can even go for base here, but I think trading is a better choice. He's probably going to go Fairy Dragon into backstab and keep the ball presence. Since the Morgan Infiltrator doesn't die, oh, he's going to go for trade. Mm. Well, I would have kept it for the extra 2 damage though. <laughs> well, I guess I, I. Well, I mean, even if he has the chance to attack later on, he's still gonna be burned down by the mage uh, uh, fire blaster, right? Yeah, it will. Anyways, the mage does. Uh, DJ Lolox, he does. He can, he's trying yep. to think about damaging that. I think he made a huge boo boo over there. At least he gets to the mirror image out and he gets the uh, Cobalt Geomancer. So yep. 
ramping up his spell damage a little bit more. He has another one in his inventory. Oh, and when Q comes out here now, this is actually a good time to play because he has a lot of cards he can play. He can play the backstab, he can play the coin, he can play the Arjun Squire, and he can play Edward McCree. Yep, definitely. So he's going to go ahead and kill off the, the Trouble Shield Master. The coin's going to come out. Oh, the Arjun Squire, and, and here we go. And, and then clear. that's a 3 drop, that's an 8-8, eight, eight. that is insane. Yep. It's not going to die to Fireball, even with that spell damage, it's not going to die to uh, a Frostbolt. It's, I mean, it's looking kind of very scary. It's a 10-2-8-8, you know. eight, eight, ladies and gentlemen. Yep, that turn 3-8-8 eight, eight is just kind of insane, and he only has a... Oh, well, uh, he has two points of cold to do with that. He can de probably delay it for two turns. And wait for a chance, but he's going to... What? That's actually very questionable. Yeah, Why I mean, he, he should have just aimed the middle one, right? Yes, he should have aimed the middle one, and he could have forced the Fairy Dragon as well. So, this is just going to allow the Fairy Dragon ability to attack the Taunt, which means even more uh, early yep. game uh, aggression here from Crazer. He's going to go ahead with the uh, Defender of Argus. I think, yeah, he's going to go with the 1-1 one, one and the 3-2. Because, I mean, you don't really want to make your Taunt onto your 8-7, save it as much as possible. He has another Code of Cold, yes, you mentioned that. But, is it going to be enough? I mean, he doesn't even, have, like, even if he Code of Cold here and uses the Arcane Missiles, is it going to be enough? I don't think so. Well, he's just going to use the Arcane Missile for sure. That's the only thing he can do right now. But, unlucky, unlucky draws on RNG. Yeah, and he doesn't even have enough mana crystals to destroy the 2-1 there. So, that's yeah. going to be unfortunate for him. Out comes the Dark Iron Dwarf, and again, that's a 6-3, man. Now, that is a very, very scary fairy dragon. That is a true drop, by the way, so he's going to be kind of insane. And, I mean, he doesn't necessarily have to play it. He can also play the Harvest Golem if he wants to. He's going to play a Dagger. Uh, I guess, in this kind of situation, I would have actually preferred to play the Dark Iron. Well, he, he's, one, he, he's thinking of saving the Dark Iron for after he, he really gets, he gets hit by AoE. Right. But because it's turn 6, he oh. completes the turn. He can actually kill off Edwin Van Cleef here if he throws out a Cobalt Geomancer and a Frostball, but he goes with the Arcane Intellect instead, and... Well, he could Frostball it anyways, and then ping it down the next turn. Yeah, but the thing is, it's gonna be the next turn, so... I mean, yeah, it doesn't get the attack. Yep. So he doesn't need to worry about it too much. He has a Flame Strike in his inventory next, so... I mean, it's in his hand. So... I don't know, that's actually going to be a very, very scary card because if he plays his Dark Iron Wall Dwarf right here, it's going to die, for sure. Every minion right now on the board is going to die, except for the Harvest Golem. So, ladies and gentlemen, even, even if ever, when Ever Van Cleef wasn't managed, it didn't manage to attack with it, it is still a tree drop that soaked up three spells without dying. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the amount of uh, spells he had to commit to that was actually very, very high, and now He's trying to think here, do I Dark Iron Dwarf this 2-3 uh, Golem and deal a little bit more damage, which I think is by all means very, very plausible, but I don't know, what do you think about that? I I should, I wouldn't have played the Dark Iron Dwarf for fear of AoE, right. so if I get the board clear right here, I can still have two four falls to deal with, uh, to play on next turn. <coughs> and I do have a lot of board presence, this is enough damage to sustain. Right. And there we go. In comes Flame Strike. Yep, the Flame Strike comes up, but it's still a 2-1. And he can't pick that up, which means now Dark Iron Dwarf can actually uh, deal a lot of damage in here. He's going to Dark Iron Dwarf it, attack with it. He's going to double Dark Iron Dwarf? No, not enough mana for it. Yeah. I mean, he can eviscerate here and make him even lower if he wants to. Because actually, by all means, he's probably going to die the next turn if he doesn't have anything to clear him up. Well, I the best way is, is to really attack good. normally and then Hero Power and Pass. Keep the deadly poison, keep the eviscerator as a surprise attack. Right, right. I mean, always having the deadly poison with the combo of the eviscerator is just yes. so good. So, yeah, I think in this case... I mean, attack with the hero, hero power and pass, but oh. seems like it's going for the deadly poison. I mean, he does have enough... Yeah, he, I, no, he doesn't have enough to kill. It's, it's too off. It's too, it's too damage off, lethal. Yeah. Here's the thing though, if another flame strike comes up, that's good, but there's no way to stop the rogue from attacking. Yep. He's used all his frosts. The blizzard oh no! The blizzard came out, but it just wasn't enough. Yeah, I mean blizzard coming out there is just not gonna be enough because he's not gonna free it's not gonna freeze the hero. And the hero has three damage there, so that is actually very, very well played yep. there. Uh coming out from oh. Crazy, but not enough mana. The frost well, oh yeah. 
Well, I mean, he could He's play. one off. He's one man off. If he plays a Sorcerer Supreme, this is also not enough because that's wasting so much yep. of mana. It's going to be ultimately a six mana cost and at the time... It's a five and a one mana cost, you need six. So, too bad. That's game set and match. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he could Frostbolt. No, actually he can survive. He can Frostbolt and ping. So, he still dies to attack. No, I mean, he could Frostbolt the hero. Oh wait, yeah, wait, what am I talking about? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's another Dark Guardian to work. And the Dark Guardian to win, that's GG's guys, I... Ah, uh, yeah, he's, there's no way he's gonna be able to survive this. <laughs> Goodbye, damage golem. Yep, here we go, out comes the... The end of Sorcerer's the Apprentice, by Reap DJ Lolex. Yep, Reap DJ Lolex indeed, because he can't do anything. Here we go. It's your turn. As your Drake's out, there comes the Dark Guardian Dwarf. He's going to buff it up even more, dealing six damage. You got to go with that overkill, man. Well played, and boom goes the dynamite again. Crazer going to get the win on DJ Lolex here. That means that now DJ Lolex is one and one against Crazer. Yep. I'm surprised. A lot of these matches have been one and one uh, in, in, this, in this tournament so far, which is kind of interesting to see. Because if I'm not mistaken, we only got to witness one game where it went 3 0, and we also only got to witness one game that went 2 3. Yes, it went all five games. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm pretty interested to see what's going to happen next. Let's jump into the next game here because I'm pretty sure everyone wants to see what's going to happen next. So, you know what? I'm going to ask you this question as usual. What do you think uh, Crazy X is going to pull out here now? Well, Crazy X. Hmm. Very interesting question right here. Wait, did. Wait, Crazy X won, right? He's playing DJ Lolex with the pre stack. <coughs> oh, sorry. So DJ Lolex lost twice. Okay. Uh, <laughs> He's down to his last stack with priest. <laughs> okay, guys. I'm sorry. I'm a little bit insane here. It's kind of interesting to see that. Let's take a quick look at DJ Lolex, though. He's got a Torrent Warrior, Torrent Warrior, Power Shield, and an Ocean Fitter. And you look at Chris X hand, he has Fan of Nice, Archie Commander, Shattered Sun. Just quickly, what do you think of Shin Mulligan here? Shin Mulligan, the second Torrent Warrior, and the Nomish Inventor. The right. Torrent Warrior, together with a Power Shield, is a very good combo. Look at the Fan of Knives. Fan of Knives doesn't actually do much to freeze minions. He should keep the Shattered Sun and Mulligan, Fan of Knives, and the Archie Commander. Yep, so I, it's used. <laughs> sorry, again, okay, sorry for my. Uh, uh, saying that uh, DJ Lolex actually took the game there. Crazy, of course, two games are still using the Rogue, man, and that Rogue is, uh, is a beast of a deck, I gotta say. He's yep. doing a lot of work here. DJ Lolex, he's gonna get a coin in this turn here. He can actually coin into a Nomai Central here if he wants to. Uh, do you think that's actually necessary? Well, he could, but. That's where you go. Well, I mean, he, he's gonna do it anyway, so he does uh, top deck a holding over, which is. That is questionable, though. I would rather keep the coin to coin out uh, the a. Yeah, but no, a tree drop. Sorry, the tree a second drop. drop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a very strong mob in its own right. Here we go. The, the, the dagger is gonna be coming out from Krasik there. He's just gonna go ahead and auto attack uh, the Novi's Engineer, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, DJ Lolex doesn't, I mean he has a holy smite to play, but I don't think he really wants to do it. I mean he can card draw, but that's not the best mob he wants to do. He's gonna heal his own mob there. Yep. So that was kind of a waste there at Crazy's part. Well no, that's actually a win for Crazy X in his own mind. Is that yeah. if I can kill it and he heals it, he's gonna sacrifice a, sac a two drop, yeah. which is a win for me. Yeah. In his own mind that is. Yeah. That's actually very, very true. So in this kind of situation, he doesn't have any other mob, so he's gonna just probably play the Shadow Sun Cleric here. And uh, I don't know, do you think that's actually the best choice? That is the best choice you can do because other than that, there's no other minions you can play and he desperately needs bot, uh, bot prices at the moment. Alright, so I'm guessing here he should probably attack the mob or even backstab it? He's gonna attack the mob, most probably. So he's gonna backstab it and attack and go for the... He's not even gonna attack with I it. I think he's a little afraid that the mob is gonna be able to slowly kill down his... Well, I mean, maybe he has something. Oh, well, he does have so Holy Smite here, so that's yep, gonna be very go. good for him. Unfortunately for him, Holy Smite to the face. Yeah, he's gonna kill the uh, Shattered Sun Terrier, so that was kind of a waste of a card, but nevertheless, he has a Dark Guardian War. Does he play it? That's the question. I mean, he can always wait for a turn here. Like, he, I guess he, he definitely have to pay it because 4 mana for a 4 4, even though he has to forfeit the better cry for another 2 extra damage, but 4 mana for a 4 4 against a priest is still the optimum damage you would want against a priest. Right. Yeah, I mean, of course, you know, with things like uh, Shadow Wood Pain, Pain Shadow, Shadow Wood Death, Death, you can always make sure that you're in that little bit of that, that yep. you know, the sweet spot, you can say. 
Uh, he doesn't attack with his dagger here, of course, because he doesn't really need to. It's still unfortunate that the Bloodlust doesn't work on your weapon, because that would be pretty damn OP. Yep. But looking over at DJ Lolek's head, he does have the turn where he's going to play that now, and he's probably going to power word, power word shield it. Yes, definitely going to power word shield it. But unfortunately, even with power word shield, the turret is still going to die to oh. the combined power of Dark Iron Drop and Hero Power. Yeah, man, look at that. He actually uh, gets a mind control draw after that, so... Interesting to see he has that. He's probably yeah, he's gonna probably run his 4 4 in. And the Stormpike Commando. Wow, Stormpike Commando is gonna do a lot of work here. Or, he, yeah, he's probably thinking of SI Agent. I mean, SI Agent. SI Agent he has to combo for the damage, though. Oh. Oops. I think he made a mistake. Mistakes were made. I don't think he can. Yeah, mistakes are made indeed. He's gonna take 5 damage in the face. At least he gets value out of that Torian card there for DJ Lolex, but. Now the question remains, he doesn't have any mobs on the board, he can by all means play, oh there we go, he has a light spawn, and that's actually, I mean it's still gonna die. To both no, here, here's where the Lolex space is a very huge dilemma, do he Holy Nova to kill off a minion and save 4 damage, or he takes 7 damage and play a light spawn? Yeah, he's gonna go with Holy Nova there, so it's left with a 3-1, he's gonna heal himself, gonna deal damage as well to the enemies, so Again here, out comes the as you trick. The Archon Square probably going to be coming out. Oh, there's a Deadly Poison. So the Deadly Poison with Eviscerate Combination is available there for him and for use. And right now, he's actually not even going to attack. He's just going to stay stationary right there. Oh, second Holy Nova. A second Holy Nova is actually pretty good here. But well, he's probably going to Nomish, en Nomish, uh, Engineer, Nomish Inventor, is it? And then heal up. That's probably what he's going to do right now. Yeah, but Nomish Engineer is probably the better choice in this kind of situation. I'm not sure if he's gonna do that though. He's, he's, he might actually even think about doing the light spawn, which is actually a really, really bad play because it's still gonna die either. Uh, nevertheless, he's gonna do a wow. second Holy Nova. So he forced out a second Holy Nova, so Crazy is probably very happy about this. He's in a really good position now. He yep. can throw out the Harvest Golem. He can even throw out a Defender of Argus after this and make it even much more scarier. Yep, definitely. So the Drake, the Drake wouldn't die to a uh, Smite. Right. Right, and now he, here we go. He's gonna be able to do five damage and, and actually seven damage to the face now. He's gonna get save his uh, weapons there. And now look at this. I mean, even if he plays a light spawn here and a, a power word shield, it's still not gonna be enough. So now he's finally gonna go ahead and run out the Gnomish Engineer. A North Shack Clary is drawn, but it's not as good. Do you think he should just even draw out the Shadow Sun? He could drop the Shadow Sun, but he's still gonna die to the Drake, and he can't even attack with a three five. Right now he's just playing on desperation. Right, right. And I think that um, if you look over at Krasik's hand here, he's definitely got a deadly poison. Yeah. He's SI even, agent. Yeah. He's got a SI agent and kill off the Sompike. I uh, kill the Sompike down the Shadowstone cleric. Wow. Uh, is it gonna be enough? Yep. There we go. There's a two damage to the tree face. SI, SI agent. Two mana to the tree five and then deadly poison to kill it off maybe. He might even just ignore it because he knows he can actually uh, not die to this. Yeah, but it's going to sacrifice a Thorn to you for it. Uh, I guess so in that kind of sense. I mean, he could actually just not waste the stuff. He can eviscerate here and attack in space. If his really doesn't kill it, to be honest. Uh, it really does, does yeah, for the one attack from his hero. Well, if he's really essentially want to keep it for those... I think uh, he's going to yeah, send the golden yeah. in is a better choice. Yeah, attack it. Trade with the... What? What? No, I think no. I think that's actually really bad. I would actually just prefer to to trade uh, with the golem. Yes, yeah, definitely trade with the golem. The golem is always going to be able to spawn into a two, two, one, anyways. So I guess it seems like he's going to go with for this. I mean, he still has board control, so it's not that much of an issue. He's at twelve damage. He's at twelve health right now. He has a engine, which is good. But the problem now is, even if he has a engine and he tries to power world shield it, it's still going to die. It's still going to die. And there we go, power world death. Power death is really good for the Ace of Shrink, that's gonna destroy that. Yeah, essentially, oh. even with the power Sengen Shield Master with the power shield on, it's not gonna stop all of the minions, maybe two of it at the most. I would suggest just one. This is Deadly Poison here. Hero Power, Deadly Poison. Run his hero into the Sengen and kill off with Stormpike. Rest to the face, that would be the best choice. Oh, he if actually you... didn't even hero power, he should have actually hero power first. Yeah, that was... Well, it's okay. He's gonna eviscerate this guy. He's gonna shatter his son a Stormpike, maybe. 
That's actually a very. That was actually a mistake by that. He should, he should have hero power before he yeah. passed. There we go. Him. Well, it doesn't really matter anyways. This is well played. That's GG's. That's a trio victory there coming up from Crazy. That's actually pretty damn insane. Crazy with his rogue deck all by himself. Uh huh. I mean that rogue is pretty lonely right now. Yep. <laughs> he's sitting there just out there. Uh, but he's really really happy about that. DJ Lolex unfortunately gonna be dropped out of this tournament, and he tried his best. I mean it wasn't enough. If you try this priest, you try this, uh, what, what else was it? The, the mage and yeah, the, the hunter. hunter. The hunter, of course, the first one. Unfortunately, it's not going to be enough, so Crazer Z, uh, Crazer K, uh, Crazer Zerk. Crazer Zerk. Uh, I guess he definitely deserves that victory. That was really well played by him. I have really no idea how to pronounce it. But yeah, I mean, uh, well played by Crazer K. We'll be right back. We've got a lot more games coming your way. We're still in the losers round here. So, I mean, at round four, we're going to be jumping to the next match here in losers round four and eventually towards losers round three and then the seven finals and all that kind of jazz so do stay tuned we'll be right back guys we've got a lot more hearthstone action and we'll be there